Hi there, it's Michael from Mikey's Mail and I'd like to take you through a step-by-step -step demonstration on using a Serenity Loom. And the Serenity Looms are a brand name and they are for making afghans and large pieces of work. The unfortunate thing about regular loom stuff that you get in regular stores is that usually they're only provided at a certain length. And uh, it's very difficult to be able to do larger panels because you've only got a certain size to work with. So this is one of the longer ones that are, are available. The Serenity Loom, because it's an S-shape, it's very deceptive. And unlike regular loom knitting, you don't work back and forth across the loom when you're doing the Serenity, but you actually work yourself away in a circle. So I'm going to take you through a step-by-step step, uh, step step demonstration on the advantages and the disadvantages to the Serenity Looms. And here we go. As I started off in our first uh, intro tutorial, the major difference with Serenity are the Serenity looms versus other regular looms. You can actually do flat panels here on the round rings, but because they are in a circle, they tend to bend in the material. So if you're working on a scarf, for example, you will actually notice that when you're done, you will actually get the rotation uh, worked into it because you are working in a circle. So it's actually better to do a scarf on a flat loom such as this. Now when you're doing the flat looming, um, the other difference that you're doing is that you are going to be working across the looms like this. So you actually just bounce back and forth, bounce, do, 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 do. It creates a really nice thick uh, piece of material. So this is uh, an advantage to something like this. However, there is a disadvantage as well. And when you're looking at these big large round ones, you can see that the distance of the pegs are actually very like an alligator in comparison to this little blue one that I have and I do sell these blue ones by the way and you can also get uh, different ones available this was a Walmart one and again you can see the teeth or the pegs are very uh, alligator like very uh, very spaced apart from each other and that actually makes quite the world of difference and this is called the gauge and the gauge is the amount of pegs per inch and this kind of thing here because the gauge is so uh, widespread apart you're going to need very thick material in order to really create uh, some paneling that doesn't have a lot of holes in it. For example, this one here, I'm actually using uh, th two strings at the exact same time in order to create the thickness, and you can see that because the black is interwoven with the colors. So it creates a very nice thick material. The thing about the Serenity Loom is that the gauging is a lot more different. So when you put everything away, the gauge difference is that you can see that the teeth are a lot closer together and they are, uh, they're basically a lot closer together creating, you will get a finer knit uh, with this kind of loom in comparison to other kinds of looms that you will see. So you can see that the difference is quite staggering. Therefore you don't have to use as thick a material when doing a serenity loom and uh, this is an advantage that the gauge is a lot better. Another thing about the Serenity Looms, we talked about already that we are working back and forth when we go across using a, f a flat loom or rectangular loom like this. With the Serenity Loom, we do not have that option to go back and forth. We only can work on one side or the other. And you've got to really think about this. Watch my fingers. See this? If you go across from each other, do you see this? See what's happening with my pointer finger? It's, it's not directly across anymore. So that's a problem with these things. So you don't actually work uh, back and forth across each other like I thought you did, but you actually work on one side or the other. Like a rectangular loom, you work in the middle. And so then basically the material falls out through the underside. In a serenity loom, the, the material is also going to be following out through the center. So the material on either side is going to be working itself through the hole on the interior. So you will not be working on the other side. In order to work out what you want to do for an actual size of your blanket or your afghan, all you can just do is just take a flexible uh, a ruler and, or a measuring tape and just kind of weave it in. Like if you're by yourself, it's kind of harder. So you just kind of weave it in. And you will find that when you ba basically do this all the way around, that you'll have five feet of space all the way on one side and then five feet coming back the other way. So in actual fact, without shrinkage, you'll actually be looking at a 10 foot wide blanket and uh, that would be very uh, quite something. 
There is one major difference between doing a serenity loom and a regular rectangular loom that you can find in the stores. These are also, you can find in the stores as well, they're just a little bit harder. And when you're actually winding up your, your material, do you see how I can fit my fingers in between the, the actual pegs? Just like so. My fingers just slide in, whatever. And so that's really easy to do on this kind of thing because my fingers can actually squeeze in between the pegs in order for me to load it. With the Serenity Loom, that's actually not possible. Because the gauge is so tight together, I can't get my finger in between, and nor can I really wrap this thing uh, any, very well. Um, in actual fact, it's really quite difficult in order to wrap a Serenity Loom with your fingers. Um, so what I did in order to address that is that I went out, and you can get a straw, but you're gonna need something a little more stronger than a straw. And I got this Valentine's, uh, a package that contains chocolates, but I noticed that the, the actual stems of them are hard plastic. And by doing so, what I did is I just cut off a three inch uh, piece off the stem and I fed my, uh, my, my uh, string through it. And I also helped using my darning needle, I actually helped uh, shove that in. It's actually quite the challenge in order to get this in. But this allows you now to be able to wind your loom because you're able to get your material through the through the actual pegs so that is one thing that you're definitely going to have to do and because this has a little bit of tension uh, really a cheap plastic straw like a regular that you get in a, in, a, in a restaurant will probably not be suffice so that's why I would recommend looking for something uh, that has a, a stronger uh, plastic to it and use it that and if you break it you can always just cut another section off but uh, I don't foresee breaking anything like this now working with the Serenity Loom, you don't have to work on, you don't have to do, to do the whole thing, you can only do a partial if you want to. So if I just uh, go from one side of the, the loom all the way around to the other, without coming back on the other side, I'm actually going to have five feet. So if you're looking for a five foot afghan, then you can go further. Again, take your measuring tape and put it uh, along in there. So if you want six feet, just uh, take your measuring tape, just place it in. Just like so, because if you're by yourself, it's harder. And you can determine by your measuring tape on how far you want this to go. Now to load up your loom is like any other loom that we've done. And I prefer a twisted knit stitch in order to do so. So feeding your string through that, uh, that plastic uh, piping like I showed you, what we're gonna do is create a slip knot. So just wrapping it around your finger twice. Okay, taking the back over the forward and then pushing up, just like so. So we're going to have that, and I'm just going to start on the edge because it makes sense to me, but I'm just going to start on the edge, and you want to leave enough straggler, which is the, the piece left over, you want to leave enough of that so we can wind that up into the first couple pegs. It's nothing worse than having a straggler hanging out of your work. Now because we are working on this, on, on the loom, it grows on the middle, so in between the pegs, so I have to make sure that I wrap this so that when this grows, it's going to naturally fall out of the inside of this loom. And you'll also notice that the pegs are also indented on the outsides. So if I want to remove the peg off, if I want to flip this up, I have to come on this side and this other side because it's all working toward the middle. Now to wrap up this loom, would I prefer a twisted knit stitch. So to wrap it up, I'm just going to just use my fingers just to make sure all of that straggler piece and everything is wrapped up into the loom and again you can probably see me having a little bit of difficulties because my fingers don't fit and now that I got my straggler into position what I want to use now is just I'm just going to move down the pipe okay and so now what we're going to do is that we're going to wrap this bad boy so using the pipe we're just going to go down about halfway and, and so basically the string is kind of tangled off camera you can't really see it but it's kind of zitting on some of it but um, what you're just going to do is just wrap just like so so just basically wrap all the way around and again if I was only doing a five foot one I'm only going to go all the way to the to the other side once and not come back to the other side now if you actually came back all the way around and actually attach this, what you'll have is a really big bag. Uh, because you will So what you need to make sure that you're working this thing like it's a big line. 
So you're just going to continue like that and uh, just basically uh, twist off. So you have to make sure that when you're wrapping this that where the strings are joining each other are actually on the inside and here. If these strings here where they're joining will be on the outside then it's done improperly and will not be able to grow. Just like here to see how it's a flat panel if this is growing on this side where is it going to go? It's not going to go anywhere because it can't. So you have to make sure that you continue to always wrap this thing so it's on the inside. So what you want to do is you want to position yourself so that you are comfortable and the only way to do that is really to put this thing on your lap. As much as it's nicer to show you a tutorial on uh, doing it on a table, it doesn't make sense because it's harder to do. So you're just going to put it on your thing. Now, the biggest complaints about Serenity Looming is the actual uh, rotation of this. And this is where, you know, we're coming across and it's just easier now to start rotating this in your lap so that it's easier to, to, to wrap it. Now, if it starts falling off at any point, just grab your hands and stop it. So even if you can't stop it right away, because what this potentially has the, the key to unwrap itself right to the start if you're not paying attention. So we're just going to continue to wrap. And I'm kind of using my other hand to guide the, the material as well. And this is all about routine. And what would make sense is that if I was wrapping this and I'd go halfway down because it saves me having to come back and having to push it down afterwards. So again, it's just a matter of getting started. I've never used this before. This is my tutorial is actually my first time actually wrapping this bad boy. I've wrapped it a couple times just as a practice tutorial, but I haven't gotten into the routine of actually doing it yet. So. If I want five feet at this point, I'm going to stop here, right in the center point, and work my way backwards. So I'm only using half the loom. But if I want longer, then what I'm going to just do is continue to follow this to whatever distance I want. So at this point, we, what we need to do is go back and push down all of the all of the the strings to a halfway point, and then come back and actually start doing this properly.